Grand Risings, beloved. You have it upon the curious treasures of Yahweh, and I'm your sister, Renee in Christ. And I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful Sabbath day. So, today I wanted to go over how all nations, anyone that wants to, you know, humble themselves and repent, ask the Most High for forgiveness, and get to Him through Christ, the only way, the way, the truth, and the life is welcomed it is not because of any type of genealogy no bloodline because you can be from the bloodline and you can still blaspheme you can still sin repent willfully and go to hell so it doesn't matter all who are faithful and obedient will be welcomed there will be some of israel who are brought in or saved however if they are disrespectful if they are whoremongers, if they are liars, cheaters, adulterers, if they like the same sex, if they are murderers, they will not inherit the kingdom. Let's get into it. Genesis 12, 12. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in the all families of the earth will be blessed. Not just one or two or twelve families. Genesis 7 goes on to say, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations, not just twelve. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Genesis 18 read, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great, mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. So shall I tell him this thing? Now Genesis 26 reads, So join in this land, and I will be with thee. And I will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed. I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars in heaven. And I will go give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Abraham was very obedient to the most high. Now Genesis 28, this is Jacob's ladder. We used to do this with a little string, make a ladder. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, mm, innumerable. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now Zechariah 12 and 3 reads, it will come about in that day that I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the people. All who lift it will be severely injured, and all the nations of the earth will be gathered against it. Matthew 24, 14, and it reads, And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And Matthew 26, 28 reads, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Matthew 28, 19 reads, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mark 16, 15 reads, And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. The whole creation, not just a certain people. Whoever believes in and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Luke 24, 47 reads, And that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. John 7 and 7, it reads, The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it, 
that its deeds are evil. Now this is for everyone, beloved. Now Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together and in one place. There were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, like, what is going on? Because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is this that each of us hear them in our native language? Both Jews and converts to Judaism, we hear them declaring the wonders of the Most High in our own tongues. So people that were original Jews and converted ones. For the Lord has commanded us saying, I have made you a light to the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. That means through all nations. Romans 3 and 23 read, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of the Most High. Hebrews 11, 6, And without faith it is impossible to please Him, not through the law, without faith. For whoever would draw near to the Most High must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. So seek Him, beloved. 1 John 2, 2, He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Timothy 2, 1, it reads, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks, not Thanksgiving Day, be made for all men. So it's for everyone. 2 Peter 3 and 9, it reads, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Titus 2 and 11. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to get every verse out the way so we can see everyone is accepted. And so I am trying to go over all the verses which let those who are closed-minded and want no one to come in but a specific people okay as well as those who have believed that lie all right to believe that they are cast out or not accepted because they're not in the sect of those individual people the scriptures say contrary all right now yes jerusalem you know the people of israel when they migrated into jerusalem build cast out um sent all over the world all into slavery bondage However, we know that there were converts who came over to Israel, not the physical place, but to the people of Israel. Even in the Old Testament, strangers and foreigners were all welcome as long as they abided in the law, all right? But now we know that we are not under the, cer the ceremonial and civil laws, all right? But we are under the Most High's grace through Christ by faith. So anyone, anyone, you could be at the end of the earth. That's what the scripture said. And you can believe in the Most High. And if you haven't heard of him, the scriptures say that you believe by the things that are made, the invisible things that he has created to your visual eye, like the blue sky, the clouds. You can feel the wind. You don't see it. All right, you can feel love. You don't see it, but you know it exists. And so all can be welcome if you are not a lover of the things of the world. Now, I'm going to get back into Titus. For the grace of the Most High has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of the Most High for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, because he gave the oracles to the Jews first. Revelation 7, 9 says, After this I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne. Revelations 14, 6 through 7. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, 
to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear Yahuwah and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And so, beloved, after hearing all these verses, for us to go back and trample over Christ's sacrifice, okay, to make it smaller than what it is, as if he just chose one nation of people and all the billions of others are not welcome simply because of a bloodline. That does not give you a shoe in into the kingdom. Please do not be so arrogant as to think that. Imagine being from Israel, right? Being um, a real Jew, you will say, but still living in willful sin, still being a murderer, still offending in certain parts of the law. Do you think truly and honestly that you will make it into the kingdom just because of a bloodline? That doesn't make sense. And so yes, Christ did come from the nation of Israel, but let's be real, beloved. Israel, I say at least half turned their back on him. At least half had their hands in his death. Okay, and do not forget that some of them said his blood be on us and on our children. That's like us today saying, I put that on my mama. I'm not lying. Knowing you lying. So I've even heard some say, we're covered in his blood because they said we put his blood on our children. No, we know that that was a negative thing that they did. In fact, they cursed their children when they did that. So it was not a good thing, but the good thing is that he died and shed blood for each and every one of us. His blood spiritually covers us all. So, with that being said, I really hope this helped each and every one of you. I hope you have a new outlook on life. If you've encountered anyone that tried to make you feel less than the wonderful person, the fearfully made person that the Most High created you for, Rebuke it. Go to God in humility. Ask him to touch your life. Pray for that person, for they are lost. Pray that they come out of their delusion before they leave this world. Because we are supposed to pray for our enemies and even love them. That's when you really show strength. Because, of course, it's easy to be angry. It's easy to lash out and it's easy to hate. But it takes a strong, sound, sound mind, a God-fearing person with a renewed and a remade and born-again heart to look over people's ignorance, to look over their anger, to look over their offenses, and forgive. I really hope this helped you. Blessings to you and your family, and I'll see you next time. Bye!